Hello, chess family. It's me, National Master Jesse James, and it's time for another installment of Bobby Fischer's My 60 Most Memorable Games. Here we go against Glukovic again with something new. We're going to be seeing a very nice um, dragon here, the Yugoslav attack. Let's see how he does it. Remember, as Fisher used to say, sack, sack, mate. And, uh, yep, he has a really good score against the dragon. And I believe him. He put the work into it, and he finds very good moves. Here we go. E4, C5, knight of 3, knight C6. D4, C takes, knight takes. Knight of 6, knight C3. And D6. This is just going into the old line, if you will. Um, he did... Um, uh, Glukovic does choose a very interesting move order here, which does allow the Accelerated Dragon, but decides to just play d6 and go into the regular classical variation. You know, Fisher likes to play his bishop to c4. Um, he likes it on this diagonal. I'm not a very big fan of this, especially since everyone knew about this. Everyone's pretty much well prepared against this. Uh, bishop to d7 got played, bishop to b3, and g6. Now we have go ahead and changed into the Dragon variation. Pawn to f3. He gets ready for his Yugoslav attack. The idea here is very simple. Um, he's going to be playing an English attacking idea. Bishop b3, queen d2. We'll probably try and trade off the bishops. And then we're just going to launch these pawns forward and castle queenside. Now, black is not defenseless, especially in the dragon. He's going to go ahead and fianchetto himself, castle kingside, and then probably push these pawns forward and try to create some counterplay down the c file. All right, here we go. Knight to a5 got played. Trying to hunt down this bishop. Um... Re, um, you know, research or games have shown that this is actually not that great here. Um, already computers given this uh, 0.7 advantage here for white. Yeah, hunting down this bishop is not that big a deal. So, yeah, even even if then, I would always recommend not to take the bishop, but always put the knight to c4 after the rook comes over here. Um, the knight would do so much damage that you want them to trade here, and it gives you a free temple for the rook to move forward. And if you do take on b3, it really just kind of helps up the defense, especially on the queen side. You would think the double pawns would be bad, but they actually are much better whenever you're defending. Bishop g5, no time to waste. Bishop g7, queen to d2, here he comes. Pawn to h6, and this is going to muddle the waters a little bit because now you don't have the standard ideas. Again, if if this was a regular game, you would just go ahead and castle, but then probably bishop h6, castles queenside. Fisher has a great, uh, a, ver a very good score against this, so Grigovic tries to cha change it up, something new. Um, pawn to h6 over here. Bishop back to e3, rook c8. His king is stuck in the center for quite a while here, which I'm sure Fisher was not um, too worried about. Goes ahead and castles, knight to c4. And believe it or not, Fisher goes ahead and plays a different move here and plays queen to e2. Apparently, this is something that he had researched, and, well, he wanted to try it out. And after knight takes e3, queen takes e3, this is just a whole new position um, for him. Check it out. Most of the time, what happens here is... They will go ahead and exchange with bishop takes c4 and then rook takes in c4. And typically in these kind of games, whenever you win um, this bishop, you know, you're doing you're doing a very good job. Um, black can go ahead and play queen c7, like I said, castle queen side and throw the rook over. This dark square bishop is just so important that typically whenever you lose this guy, well, it's really hard to create counterplay. Believe it or not, Fisher is able to create it anyways. After queen e2, knight takes, queen takes, the, the uh, computer does give this about equal which is very surprising. Most time it's just giving black as a winning position because again, it's really hard to attack this guy. So it's really this bishop versus this bishop in this game. Let's see whose will is stronger here. Black goes ahead and castles, and here it comes, pawn to g4. If you do play pawn h4 right away, I'm sure Fisher was not liking the idea of pawn to h5 here because now with g4, you can see that there's plenty of defenders over here and you don't even have to take here. You can always hope that they'll take on h5 and then knight just takes back. So here, well, Fisher just goes ahead and plays g4 to stop this idea from coming. Here we go. Queen to a5. Already ideas about sacrificing on c3. This is a very normal tactic to do. You can sacrifice here and go for a nice endgame because the pawn structure is going to be all messed up here. Typically, you'll win the pawn back and then have these two isolated pawns over here. And white's pawns were all weak because uh, weakened because they're pushed up too far. Here comes Fisher, h4. E6, a move that maybe he did not want to play, but he did think was necessary. Here you have to be very careful with the ideas coming up. You can see that the bishop is already starting to put pins on this guy over here. So um, G5, H5, these are all very, very um, cumbersome moves. So we don't want to deal with them. So he goes ahead and plays E6 here, the best move. This does make the D6 pawn weak, but it is able to be defended. All right, here comes Fisher. Here we go. What do you play here? 
A nice tricky move, knight to e2. I know a lot of people are looking at g5, looking at h5, which are very good ideas to try to attack. But here, Fisher keeps it nice and simple, knight to e2. He puts a little bit of pressure on d6. Not the main idea. What he's trying to do is bring the knight over to get ready for the kingside attack. As we'll see, this knight actually does become quite important. All right, rook c6. And it makes sense to me. Um, you want to double up your rooks and then also get a free tempo by defending. Here we go. White to move. What do you play here? Do we go g5 here or h5? Push pause. See if you can figure it out. All right. Hopefully you did a little thinking here. You tried to figure it out. What's the move here? If you win h5, eh, black just plays g5 here and he's able to um, close up the game. And actually the position now gives black as the uh, person who has the advantage now. f4 is just not working here. As after g takes f4, queen takes f4, well, you could play knight h7 here to guard this g5 square, and now it's going to get a little bit hard to control the square for you to push it. Or maybe even just get lazy and just play something like queen g5 and say, you know what, We're not gonna, I'm not going to let you take me uh, in the middle game. Let's go to the end game and let's see what happens. With that being said, black already has a distinct advantage. So for those of you who said g5, good job. This is typically not a move that is good for you because you can close the position. With that being said, g5 works out perfectly here because you have the double attack. Either way, we're going to be able to open up either the g file or the h file here. And well, he goes ahead and plays. Pawn takes over here. If he did try knight h5 here, well, pawn takes on h6. Bishop will have to move. Let's see, where does the bishop go to? Uh, let's say it goes to f6 right here. Um, just because if he did go to h8, ah, I don't think the bishop looks as good there. It even takes away escape square. Bishop f6 makes more sense to me. And there's ideas with f4, f5 on the way. Even rook g1, rook g5. A lot of things here. So you might as well just go ahead and take h takes g5, h takes g5. And then the knight goes to h5 here. Now in this position right here, it looks like white is doing pretty well here. But black probably felt very comfortable. As I mentioned earlier, the dark squares are very important right now. And since black has a dark square bishop and white does not, even if you are able to open up the h file, it's really hard to checkmate, especially after rook moves over, because you can't really win the h8 square. So even after the queen checks on h7, king goes to f8. With that being said, Fisher does have a nice idea here. Here we go. f4 gets played. Rook to c8. King b1, a nice calm move here. And then queen to b6. Let's trade queens here. For those who were thinking, maybe we should try f5 here. Um, it's not a bad idea, although I won't say it's going it's going to be as nice as the game it will turn out. But f5 is 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 a move in this position. The idea is to try and undermine and obviously try and open up this position. And you can see the bishops putting pressure over here. So well, you can't take g takes of course because rook takes on h5. So what happens here? You would try to take with the pawn, and after this. Well, if you take back with the pawn, well, black's actually kind of happy here. He could take back with the bishop or even the queen. But here we have a much stronger move here. Rook to d5, blocking and also allowing you to take on f5. And, well, this bishop is going to be really bad for you too. Anyways, back to the game. King b1 got played. Queen back to b6. We want to trade queens? <laughs> of course not. Queen to f3. A simple idea. Rook takes, queen takes threat over here. Rook to c5. Queen back to d3, a little bit of pressure on d6, a little subtlety. Bishop takes on c3, knight takes on c3, and knight takes on f4. Now, this is something that you probably did not want to play, but this is something that will at least not let Fisher break through so fast. What was the problem in this position? Why couldn't he just keep his bishop? Well, here, what do we play here to try and keep the pawn? I guess you try to play something like rook c6, but something as simple as knight a4 can get played. Okay, so do we play the other rook over? Uh, if rook over here, now we can play f5. So here there's just too many threats, and they're just piling and piling up. Here f5 is just going to be very good. Um, again, you can't take with the g pawn because rook takes on h5. If e takes on f5, eh, now we actually see there's a few winning ideas here. Knight d5 looks very strong to me. Another idea that is strong here is rook takes h5. Perfect timing here. If the G pawn takes back, pawn takes, and look at these pawns, you know this is definitely good here for white, especially when the knight jumps to D5 here. These pawns in G6, F6, dear lord. There's too many variations here. Something has to be good. So that's why black went for this extreme idea. I, uh, extreme idea. Knight takes on F4, queen to F3, knight to H5, and well, white to move. What do you play here? Hopefully this wasn't too hard. As Fisher says, all you got to do is sacrifice, and then you'll win. 
when you're playing against the dragon. Rook takes f, f, uh, h5, queen takes on h5, bishop to e8. And, uh, well, here we go. Queen to h6. A nice move here. For those of you who did play rook h1, this is still a very good move, but I do like Fisher's move here just because it stops any ideas about the king running to f f8, which is the escape square. Rook takes on c3. Again, this is mostly desperation uh, more than anything. This is not a uh, power move, if you will. Pawn takes. Rook takes. And pawn to g6. Um, here again, rook h1. Not a bad idea to play. But here, this does allow black to play queen d4 and guard this h8 square. What's the difference? Why did g6 get played? Well, here we're going to be opening up more files and the diagonals here, making this pawn weak too. Here, pawn takes on g6. And, well, simple chess here. Rook h1, queen to d4. And, well, it is now white to move and force checkmate in three moves. Can you figure it out? Funny enough, Fisher played uh, checkmate in five moves, but you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll give it to him since he's such a strong chess player. As he would always like to say, I'm, I'm a terrible chess player. I miss simple things. <laughs> uh, things are not so simple for us. huh? All right, hopefully somebody pushed pause. Did you figure it out? Here, the uh, mate that Fisher missed was bishop takes on e6 check. Of course, the king can't move anywhere, so the bishop blocks. Queen h7 check, king f8, and mate. But... Fisher found another checkmate here. This was just a little bit later. He played queen to h7 check, and the game is over. Uh, well, there's only one move for black here, so king f8. What do you play now? At this point, after queen h7 check, uh, black went ahead and resigned because, well, this checkmate's not too hard to find. What do you play here? The king has nowhere to move. Remember, the queen can't checkmate by herself. Rook f1 check would have been played. And here, you have nothing better than to block with your pieces. And after all the blocks are done... Well, it's just check and mate. Well, guys, hope you enjoyed this very nice Yugoslav attack or an attack um, uh, against the dragon. We'll see you in the next video.